friends, it is Miss Katie here and I have another Bible lesson for you all today. Today we are going to be in Mark chapter 7. So let's see if you guys can find the big number 7. Did anybody find it yet? That's right, it's right up over here, kind of tucked back in the corner. Well, this, not the corner, but the middle of the Bible. And you can see here that we're in um, the book of Mark. But I am also going to read a verse from John chapter 6. Or, I'm sorry, um, John chapter 3. Uh, so we're going to pop on over to John. And I want to see if you guys can find the big number three. So, does anyone see the big three? This one's a little bit easier to see, even though it is still in the middle of the Bible in the page here. So, yep, yeah, it's right up here on the top. And you can see here that is the book of John. All right, before we get started with our lesson though, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for this day and the time that you have given us to be together, to learn your word and what it is that you want us to know about you and your son, Jesus. <clears throat> I ask you, Lord, that if there are any distractions that are gonna try and um, keep those who are, keep the boys and girls and those who are listening, Lord, um, from being able to learn what it is that you will stop those distractions, Father, and that they may be able to um, be able to tell others what they have learned about you and your son today. In your son's name I pray, amen. All right, so let's see. Jesus had continued teaching and preaching and doing miracles. Everywhere he went, large crowds gathered to hear his teaching. They brought their sick friends and family to see Jesus so that he could heal them. Some people could not walk, and some people have been sick for years and years, and some people had sores all over their skin. And Jesus, he healed them all. So some miracles we've learned about Jesus are him feeding the, um, over 5,000 people. Do you remember that when Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread from a boy's lunch and fed so many people. And then we also learned about how Jesus healed a woman who just touched the edge of his garment. Yeah, we learned that one last week. And Jesus was on his way to go and do another miracle for somebody. And um, that had happened. And the, um, the, the miracle that he was on his way to go and perform when that lady touched the hem of his um, garment. Uh, he was going to heal Jairus' daughter and he, um, at first she was just sick, but as they were going, she had died. So he raised the little girl from the dead. So we said miracles are unexplainable, supernatural events that only God can do. And um, there's miracles that still do happen th these days, but they don't happen as they did um, quite when Jesus was walking on the earth. Some people get healed from their cancer, like all of a sudden their cancer is all gone and the doctors don't know how to explain it. And that's Jesus healing. Some people, um, when they're hard on finances, um, meaning they don't have much money and they need to keep paying their bills, somehow, even though the numbers don't make sense, people are still able to pay their bills. And sometimes money just kind of gets put in someone's hands unexpectedly. And that's Jesus working and caring and providing for people. And that's another miracle that he does. So why could Jesus do these miracles? Yes, because he is the son of God. Jesus did these miracles because he had compassion on people and he loved them. But Jesus also did these miracles to prove that he is God's son. Only God's son could do these wonderful works. And one day, some people brought a man to Jesus. And this man was deaf. That means he couldn't hear anything. So, because the man could not hear words, what else do you think he wasn't able to do? 
yeah, he probably wasn't able to speak very well. So um, we call this uh, mute. That means that the man could not hear and he could not talk. So he was called a deaf mute. So when you can't hear and you can't speak, that's what um, they had called them. So imagine that he could not hear Jesus and he could not talk to Jesus, but he had friends who believed that Jesus could heal him. They brought him to Jesus. Oh, Jesus, please. Put your hands on this man so that he will hear and talk. The friends had begged Jesus. And Jesus took the man away from the crowd. The man might have been afraid. He probably did not know what's going on. But Jesus did not want everyone crowding around the man. Sometimes Jesus healed people without even seeing them. And sometimes he just spoke and they were healed. We learned about the woman who touched Jesus' clothes and she was healed. And today, this time, the Bible says in Mark chapter 7 that Jesus put his own fingers in the man's ears. And Jesus spit on his own fingers and reached in the man's mouth and touched the man's tongue. Jesus looked up to heaven, sighed, and said, be opened. Jesus did a lot of things for this miracle, didn't he? We don't know why he did all that, but when Jesus spoke, he immediately, the man could hear and he could talk just like everyone else. He didn't need to learn to talk. He could already do it. So how quickly did this miracle happen? Yeah, immediately. And how could Jesus do this? That's right, because he is the son of God. So what do you think was the first thing you would say if you were healed? What would be the first thing that you were you would say if you couldn't hear and speak and all of a sudden you could? What would be the first things out of your mouth that you would say? Thank you, that would be a very good one. And then what else would you make, might say? Yeah, you might wanna go tell your friends about what happened. And what do you think would be the first thing that you would hear? Yeah, so um, this man, he probably heard Jesus' voice first, but then he could possibly hear the birds that were chirping or the sound of the wind. There's lots of things that he might be able to hear. And the Bible says that the people were astonished. That means the people were shocked and amazed. And they started telling everyone what had happened. Did you see that? Did you hear what Jesus just did? They asked. He healed a deaf man and made him speak. The Old Testament book of Isaiah, it says that people will know when God sends the Savior because the blind will see and the deaf would hear. If Jesus had not made the deaf man hear, the man would not know that Jesus is the Son of God. He would not know that Jesus could forgive his sins. And he would not know that there was a way for him to go to heaven when he died. And this is called the gospel message. Jesus wants you to hear the gospel too. That is why you are in church or watching the video or even reading your Bibles. The gospel is the good news of Jesus, the Son of God, who came to be our Savior. Jesus wants you to believe that he is the Son of God. Um, the Bible says that God is holy and he is without sin. He cannot allow any sin into heaven, but we are sinners. And sin are the bad things that we say, do, or even think. Have you ever disobeyed your mom or dad? Or maybe a grandparent or a babysitter? That's sin. Have you ever been selfish and not wanted to share or take turns? That's sin. Have you ever thought a mean or unkind thought about someone when you're angry? That's sin too. God says we must be punished, and God says the punishment of our sin is to be separated from him forever in a place of suffering. But John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the Bible says that God loves each of us 
every single person so much that he let someone else take the punishment for our sin. He sent his perfect and holy son, Jesus, to take the punishment for our sin. Jesus is holy and sinless, but Jesus let himself be killed on the cross to take the punishment for our sin. And Jesus, he died for us. He willingly did that because he loves us so much too. And he was buried in a tomb. But because he is the son of God, he did not stay death, dead. He has the power over death. And Jesus rose again from the dead three days later. So God says, if you believe that Jesus is the son of God, and you believe that Jesus died for your sin and took the punishment for your place, you never have to be separated from God. You will live forever with him in heaven when you die. But you have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and you have to ask for forgiveness of your sins. So, think about these questions. Are you a sinner? And you know what? The answer to that for every single person, including myself, should be yes. We are all sinners. And do you understand that sinners cannot go to heaven to be with God because there cannot be any sin there? God can't allow any sin into heaven because he's perfect and holy. But for those of us who believe that Jesus is the son of God and we have asked him forgiveness of our sins and that Jesus is our savior and that Jesus took the punishment for our sins, then we will be able to live forever with Jesus and God in heaven. So, if you have not asked Jesus to forgive your sin and be your savior, you can do that today. If you want to do that, I ask that you will go speak with someone who can help you. Now, if you know me, I would be happy to come and see and talk to you, but other people that you could talk to might be your mom or dad who believe, or your grandma or grandpa, or an aunt and uncle, a neighbor, even the pastor or Sunday school teacher at your church. There's many people who would be willing to help you with this choice and this decision that if you're ready to make it. So um, we're going to pray before we go and do our Michael and Emily story and then learn our memory verse for today. All right. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for this story. I pray that if there is someone out there who's listening to this um, lesson and watching this lesson, Lord, who's been thinking about asking Jesus to be their savior and to forgive them of their sins, I pray, Lord, that you will help them um, understand what that means and to know um, for sure, without a doubt, that your son, Jesus, is the son of God and that he is also God, and that he has the power to heal and to forgive sins, Lord, and that he had the power over death, that he did not stay dead when he died on the cross for our sins and took our punishment, but that he rose again, Lord. And we thank you so much for the gift of your son, that you both love us so much that you were willing to send your son, and Jesus was willing to come to die on the cross for our sins and to be the, take the punishment and to be our savior we thank you lord and i pray and ask father that if there's someone who's wanting to do this that you will have someone there ready and willing to talk to them uh, to help them understand the choices that they are making in your son's name i pray amen all right boys and girls let's see what's going on with our friends michael and emily today There is a new girl named Angela in Emily's class. Angela was deaf. She could not hear at all. A special helper came to school each day with Angela. She was called an interpreter. Her name was Miss Karen. Miss Karen used sign language to tell Angela everything the teacher said. And Angela used sign language to talk to Miss Karen. They talked back and forth with their hands. Mommy, Emily said when she came home, we have a new girl in our class. Her name is Angela. She is deaf and she can't hear, but she can talk with her hands. Well, have you said hello to her yet? Mommy asked. Oh no, Emily was surprised. I don't know sign language. Just wave and smile. Everyone understands that, Mommy encouraged. The next day at school, Emily smiled at Angela and waved. Angela smiled and waved back. At recess, Angela and Miss Karen walked over to Emily. 
Angela signed to Emily. Emily smiled. Miss Karen told her what Angela had said. She said, hi, my name is Angela. What's your name? I'm Emily, answered Emily. Angela signed again. Emily looked at Angela and then at Miss Karen. Would you like to jump rope with me, said Miss Karen? Sure, Emily nodded. Miss Karen twirled one end of the big jump rope. Emily and Angela took turns jumping and twirling. Soon, a big group of girls wanted to jump rope with them. Mommy, Emily asked at night, can I learn some sign language so I can talk with Angela? Mommy thought a minute. Mrs. Anderson signs for deaf people at church. She can teach you a few signs. That next Sunday, Mommy took Emily to talk to Mrs. Anderson. They explained about Emily's new friend. Sure, I can teach you some simple signs. I can even teach you how to tell Angela about Jesus and invite her to Sunday school, Mrs. Anderson offered. Really? Emily marveled. Yes, please. That night, Emily met with Mrs. Anderson. She taught Emily a few simple sentences. Would you like to play with me? Please sit with me at lunch. She gave Emily some pictures that showed how to make the signs. And I wrote down some websites so you and your mommy can look at on the computer, she said. You have mommy type in the word and watch a person do the signs. Then you can practice new words whenever you want to. Emily watched and copied Mrs. Anderson's signs. Mommy made a video on her phone so Emily could practice at home. All that week, Emily practiced her signs with Mommy. Each day, Emily would sign something to Angela and Angela would answer her. One day, Emily spoke to Angela while Miss Karen signed. Angela, Emily began, at my church, we have a sign language leader for deaf people. She's helping me to learn sign. I want, you, I want to tell you what I have learned. Angela smiled and nodded. Emily slowly signed while she spoke. Miss Karen listened and helped. I learned that Jesus is God's son. Emily spoke as she made the signs with her hands. We cannot be with God in heaven when we die because we are sinners. God's son took the punishment for our sin. He died on the cross and rose again. Jesus can forgive your sin. A huge smile broke across Angela's face. I don't know about Jesus. Can I come to your church and learn more? Angela signed. Emily looked at Miss Karen and then back to Angela. If your mom and dad will let you come to Sunday school and church with me on Sunday, I'm sure Mrs. Anderson could explain more to you. Angela nodded and smiled and said yes. That night, Emily could barely wait to tell mommy how she had told Angela about Jesus and how Angela wanted to come to church with her. I'm proud of you, Emily, mommy hugged her. Not only did you learn a new language, but you also used what you know to tell Angela about Jesus and invite her to church. I can't wait to learn more sign language so I can talk with my hands, Emily said. All right, boys and girls, what um, special language did Angela speak with her hands? Yeah, that's right. She did sign language. So she talks with her hands and uses her hands to make um, words. And why did she do that? Do you know why she spoke with her hands? Yeah, because she was deaf and she couldn't hear and she couldn't speak. Um, so the way she talks is with her hands. And who was Miss Karen and what did she do? Do you remember who Miss Karen was in the story? Yes, Miss Karen was Angela's helper and she was the one who would sign what the teacher had said and she would talk um, and say what Angela had said uh, with her hands. And that was called an interpreter. So uh, Miss Karen was the special helper who was able to talk with her hands and read what Angela was saying with her hands. So what did Emily tell Angela about Jesus? Do you remember what she said about him? Yeah, she had mentioned that he is God's son who took the punishment for our sins so that we can go to heaven. And she also said that Jesus is the one who can forgive us our sins. And she also mentioned that we cannot go to heaven to be with God because we're sinners, but that Jesus, he did take that punishment for our sins and he's the way that we are able to go to heaven. So, 
Um, before we go, let's go ahead and do our memory verse. And you can see here, let me see if I can get this. Okay, that we are in Acts 10, 38. And it says, Jesus went about doing good. Acts 10, 38. And let's say that one more time. Acts 10, 38. Jesus went about doing good. Acts 10, 38. So the verse was shortened, but I'm going to read the full verse. That way you have it. Um, but for memorizing, you can say Jesus went about doing good. Those three dots there mean that there's some other words that are between Jesus and him doing good. Um, and those words here, so, um, so I'm going to read this whole verse here, Acts 10:38. how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So there's also some other verse words after that. But you heard that Jesus went about doing good. So, um, and he also healed everybody who is oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So remember, boys and girls, that Jesus is God's son. He is able to heal people and he was able to perform miracles because he is God's son and God was with him so Jesus wants to heal people because he loves them and he cares for them and that is also why Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins and took the punishment for our sins for those of us who ask for forgiveness for our sins and believe that Jesus did die on the cross and took that punishment for our sins all right, boys and girls, we'll see you next week. Goodbye.